the citizen is defined by obligation and uh, and by the boundaries that define you know the next citizen either because it's neighbor or worker or employer or something like that and the grand exploring soul is marginalized as an eccentric or if necessary more seriously marginalized as mad in some way i mean madness basically at, up until the level of physical violence means you are behaving in a way which makes me feel uncomfortable therefore there's something wrong with you uh, <clears throat> yes so uh this this now it's interesting uh and this is one of the points that's dear to me i mean they arrive in different orders each time but i think of history as a kind of mass psychedelic experience and the drug is technology and as technology gets uh, more and more uh, uh, perfected as a mirror of the human mind the cultural experience becomes more and more hallucinatory and for at least the past couple of hundred years boundary dissolution has been underway at every level of western civilization i mean i mean you could push it further back uh, the magna carta the the fact that princes and lords of the realm would actually attempt to force the king's signature on a document defining their privileges they are after all ordinary human beings the king is the divine appointed uh, regent of god in heaven so this was a severe boundary dissolution within the context of the age in which it was taking place they were actually saying you as christ's representative on earth should cede some of this omnipotence to us mere mortals suspended in the political process well that leads then to broader demands for human rights for uh the idea that a permanent uh and large segment of society kept in permanent poverty is unacceptable we got rid of debtors prisons and things like this uh uh as our as the collectivity of our humanness becomes an intellectual legacy for all of us there is a dissolving of boundaries of race class status language so forth and so on and the whole of the 20th century has seen a massive acceleration of this uh the breakdown of the soviet union was in fact simply it was even so described the lifting of the iron curtain meaning a membrane has suddenly disappeared and more and more of these membranes are disappearing and and what is emerging then is a more and more psychedelic experience meaning a sense of acceleration of information flow a sense of rising ambiguity about what it all means everything seems to carry both a uh, a good facet and a detrimental facet the ambiguity of everything is increasing the connectedness of everything is increasing and i will argue later in the day that this is a general tendency of the time and space in which we are embedded and that we ourselves are uh, a reflection of this where is life carrying us what is this all about uh is it carrying us toward extinction so that the rest of nature can heave an enormous sigh of relief and then get back to the business of nest building uh, mating flights and oviposturing and whatever it is that they're doing out there uh or is it carrying us toward um some kind of a transition if you look back through the history of life 
which is a long history. I mean, it reaches back uh, a billion years. It's every advance happens suddenly, unpredictably, and in a very short period of time. Some of you who stay tuned to the scientific literature may have noticed this series of articles that were around last week about what they're calling the Big Bang of biology, that uh, there was a period of time, incredibly brief, perhaps between a million and ten million years, when all the phyla of life on this planet radiated into existence, sometime between 525 and 535 million years ago, just it all snapped into existence. Uh, the, the episode in w which life left the sea is a similar, highly confined transition event. Uh, people uh, recently have written about what they call punctated or punctuated evolution. Evolution is not apparently a slow curve of unfoldment. It is instead a series of equilibrium states punctuated by violent fluctuations in between and then a new equilibrium state. So uh, history, I believe, is not an aberration any more than leaving the sea could be called an aberration of marine existence. I mean, obviously, it is not marine existence, and obviously, we are not living in the same world as groundhogs and hummingbirds, psychologically. But leaving the sea did not represent uh, uh, an ontological transition. It represented an extremely dramatic shift of modality. And this is what history is. History is characterized by its brevity, for one thing, I mean, we have packed more change into the last 10,000 years than the billion years which preceded it. 